Hi! Welcome to my Godot Dungeon Generator tutorial. In this part I will be going over a basic setup for how we can move around the maze we generated previously. So first of all, let's take a look at where we were last time. We have this neat little generator here, it's working fine. If you weren't around for this, I will put a link in the description below. There are still some issues with this however. For starters we can see some lines between here. This is part of the tile map settings and stuff. I'm gonna fix that here real quick. So let's go into the project settings and check uh, quality. Uh, use pixel snap. We want that one for starters. And then our sprite here, I'll actually rename that. Let's call it base tiles. Okay. And I'm gonna change the import settings on this. I want this to be, yeah, let's use a preset, 2D pixel. That makes it pixel perfect and should get rid of any line issues. And yeah, we can see everything looks fine now, no more lines. Next, I am going to swap the maze to generate instantly now, since we want to move around inside of it. That is actually just a few small changes. You can comment this out or remove it, I'm just gonna remove it since we don't really need it right now. So we can get rid of the physics process. Don't need any of this and now we're here in the ready function. And do while not generation complete RDF step. And I was gonna do basically the same thing the physics function did, just all in one step, I think. Yes, it loads and it's immediately generated before even starting. Okay, next thing, let's, let's clean up the maze a bit. Let's make the blue stuff white because it doesn't really look very, uh, floor stuff, empty. 4x in range of width, 4y in range of height. If get cell x comma y equals equals tiles dot blue, we make it white. Um, tiles dot white. Okay, let's see. There we go. That's fine can adjust what it looks like exactly later, but for now we have our maze a bit more complete now. Or a bit, bit more clean looking I would say. Cool, now let's create a player character. Uh, let's go to scene, to the scene, actually I'm gonna change that. Change this into a kinematic body 2D. Call it player, and save it. Okay, this thing needs a shape. Collision shape to D. Uh, let's, let's go with a rectangle shape. I'll deal with the details later here. Add a sprite so we can see what it looks like. I'll put that at the top. Okay, a sprite. Let me just use a sprite I already have. You can just put in whatever image you want, really. In case of doubt, just use a small uh, square. I'm just putting in my necromancer. Okay, he's not imported correctly. Let me just put him on 2D pixel as well. Because I don't want him to be blurry. Okay, go back to this. Make it fit size-wise. Move it down a little. That. And that's roughly fine. Doesn't need to be perfect. Right now, because, well, it's basically a placeholder sprite anyway, so whatever. Okay, let's actually give this also a camera to D. There we go. Camera to D, set it to current, set the zoom 
level 2.2 because our necromancer is pretty small. So a full sized camera would be overkill. Now, what I can do is add the player. I actually put this under the maze generator for now, so it is uh, so the uh, zooming that's currently done in the maze generator is automatically applied here. Where is it? Scale this part. This is now also applied to the player, so it's always going to fit inside our, side our maze. Now we still need to do a few things here. Mm, let's reposition it first. At the end of our function here, I guess we can do that. Let's say um, player dot position. I'm not sure what it was recommending there. Equals thirty two because that's our tile size times vector to start x start y. That's actually gonna place us, yeah, it places us here on the corner. We don't want that. I'll put us here in the middle. So I'm just gonna add plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. And that should shift us half a tile in x and y direction. So we're right here. Now we can't currently move yet. So let's do that. Project settings, input map, move up, move down, move left, and move right. Uh, let's do, I'm just gonna do the WASD keys for now. Can always add more later. Cool, WASD. Mm, do we need anything else here? No, we don't. Let's give the player a movement script. Don't care about any of this. Um, function physics process. And actually, we're going to want a speed. So let's just say var speed equals 100. The speed depends on what size you're working with. Since you might not be working with the same sizes as me, just try it and see what works. Let's start with an empty movement vector and check all the input directions. Now, since we want to collide with the walls, but we don't want to get stuck on them, I'll just use the move and slide function, which is part of our kinematic body uh, player collider. Then the physics system can take care of everything. Okay, that seems fine. Let's try it. No, that's not fine. Actually, I forgot about something. Right. The player has collision, but our tile map does not. Let's give the tile map collision as well. So we can go into the tile set and go to the last tile. Um, move up, please. There, this last tile, I want to give a shape. And that's really it. Because now we have a collision shape, it should collide fine. Yes, it collides. I can go around corners and yeah, I can't I can't cross onto the black anymore. I can move out here, I'm gonna leave that in for now. Doesn't really matter right now, but yeah, and here we now have functional walls. If you are changing anything about that, you're gonna want to be aware of the collision layers. So currently the player and the um, walls are on the same collision layer by default. So I don't have to change anything about that. If you are setting up any other collisions that I don't have here, then you're gonna want to be careful what layer you put things on. Otherwise uh, you're gonna get, well, incorrect collisions.
Right, that is going to be all for today. Bye.